Good evening, St. Lucia, and thank you for joining us for this panel discussion in commemoration of International Women's Day, which was celebrated on March 8, 2018. I am your moderator this evening, Nicole MacDonald. Our theme for this evening is society's role in protecting our children from sexual abuse, which will see us discussing a multifaceted types of topics on various areas. Before I introduce you to this evening's panel, we wanted to start with the voices of our youth. I now invite you to view a presentation by the St. Joseph's Convent Theater Arts Group. Concentration, 64. No repeat or hesitation. I go first. We go. Let me alone. Concentration. Yes. Before. Let's play mommy and daddy. Come to food. Hurry up, Sharon. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a fella by his so. If you want to let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. And what ego will be? Eh? Patsy, you is the children. You and Michelle. And the rest of we go play like if we are your friend and thing, okay? So why all are we can't be children? Eh? Why you can't be one too? William, the mother and the father will play over here. And the rest of we go play here. And where are the children going? The children could go by their mother and father or they could stay over here. Good, but see, you have to come Give by me. You have to Please go there. Please. I'm going to tell my mommy. What happened to you, eh? Nothing. So why are you crying, eh? Just answer me why. What happened to you? Nothing. So somebody interfered with you? No. Well, go outside and play child. No. You see, you asked me busy there, you're not going to work out my soul case. Let we go. Which one of all you hit, Patsy? Nobody. So why is she crying? We don't know. So the mad child I am now, she's just running upstairs crying. But we don't know what happened to she. You see you? Yes, you. I afraid you. You have one sharp mouth for a little boy. But me do nothing. Miss Doris, we had to pass in nothing for true. We was playing and... And what happened? Nothing. She just started to cry just so. We was playing dolly house and William tried to hold she hand and she started to cry. You're sure that's what happened? You're sure that I do she nothing? No. If all of you can't play good, I send all of you home. You hear? You hear me? Yes, yes Miss Doris. Now all of you play good and don't make so much noise. Yes, yes Miss Doris. Oh, I don't have time to see about you now. I'm too busy. You see, you me are playing with you. Yes, you too cry, cry. Me are playing if you need her. Nobody eggs or you nothing. And you run and go tell your mother. Yes, William tried to kiss me. So? But I don't want nobody to kiss me. Wait. When you get big, you go see. That's when I get big, and you always think you know everything. Yes, yeah, sweet, because I'm bigger than all you. Yes, yeah, sweet, because I'm bigger than all you. Well, I don't care. I don't want William to kiss me. He do nothing. He likes to kiss me for two months. If he play, he must kiss you. Eh? -eh. If he play, he's the father and use the daughter. He not supposed to kiss you. Father, dog his daughter. Who says so? My father does kiss me. Yes, but not on your mouth. Yes. Father not supposed to kiss daughter. My mother say that how? My mother say that how your mother always say. You see if on you not playing good, me are playing eh? Well go play now. You see if on you are playing good, I'm going home eh? Well go home, we I do you nothing. You see if on you are playing good, I'm going home. Don't tell she we are doing nothing. Okay, and what you go tell she? That William 
not trying to kiss you. Red kiss kiss, party oh, red kiss kiss, party red boys, boys. I got it all. Wait now, come back, big girl. Wait, why you not playing good time, boy? Yes, we playing. No bother with them. Yes, we playing. I'm not playing if William is the daddy. Well, who you want to be the daddy? Anybody else. How oh, anybody else? It only have two boys there. William and Echo. Make up your mind. <sighs> Which one? William, but I don't want William to kiss me. But me understand you now. It's when you reach home from school, your father does kiss you. Yes, but not on my mouth. But where then? On my face. Okay, what's the difference? Kiss on mouth, kiss on face. My mother says that. Huh? Oh, we don't want to hear what your mother says. Let me play before it get dark or before party mother come and say we're making too much noise. Right. Mm -hmm. Let me play school over and when we reach home. But my mother say that how when you make boys kiss you, you just get sick. <laughs> Your mother's so stupid. She only tell you that so you wouldn't let nobody kiss you. Well, me don't want nobody to kiss me neither. And a cook is here yesterday, mm. but not on my mouth. You're stupid, just like Patsy. Sharon Fred, kiss kiss, Sharon Fred, kiss kiss, Sharon Fred, boys, no. boys. You don't see me, William and Echo kiss you and see No, no, let me go and you ain't going to tell me what. Well, go no. Oh, you leave the girl now. If somebody tried to hold you and kiss you, you wouldn't like it. But who says so? If your father tried to hold you and kiss you, what you go to? My mother wouldn't tell my father nothing, huh? Why? My mother would just want to come and want to buff me. She does always blame me for everything. But how she can do that? It's not your fault. You don't know my mother. Anything happen, she does jump and blame me. She does never blame my father. She does only blame me. So if I go and tell she, is daddy who touch me up? She not going to listen. She's going to watch me as if I'm mad and say, What happened, child? You going off? You know how she likes to talk. Remember the time when Daddy had break the lamp? She come blaming me. Juliet! Juliet, come here! Who break the lamp? As sure as you! I tell she, No, it's Daddy who break it. She'll just start to get on. As if it's I who do something bad. Oh, my mother. If I only go and tell my mother that, she will get mad and want to get paranoid. What is paranoid? You never know nothing. You always stop in the talk to ask some stupid questions. But I don't know what paranoid is. Not paranoid, stupid. Paranoid. I will tell my I don't know what it means. You crazy, vex or that. All you just get on there. Eh? If she don't understand, how you expect she to know? Well, that is she business. Anyway, it's up now going sweet. No, I don't even remember what I was saying, huh? You was telling us what your mother would say. Right. My mother, my mother gets on so stupid, eh? I can't tell you what my mother go say. She will get on so stupid. Come, play you with me. I'll show you how. Okay, what to say? Just play and tell me what happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mommy. Um, Daddy, mm -hmm. go ahead now, tell me how. But I don't know what to say. How do you mean you don't know what to say? If your father come and try a thing by you, what you go do? I, I will run and I will go and I will tell my mommy. Yes, but what you go tell she? Well, well, I will, I will wait for a day when Daddy not home and then I will go and I will tell mommy. Mommy, Daddy been interfering with me. Yes, but how you go tell she? Well, well, I will say, Mommy, Mommy, um, me, me can't go tell me, Mother. So who you go tell? I will go, and I will tell me teacher. Miss Richards, they want to teach all of me English. I will go and tell Miss Richards, and Miss Richards will go and tell mommy because mommy doesn't believe nothing I say about daddy. Okay, well, play you as Miss Richards. What you go tell your mother? I will go and I will knock on the door at home and I will say, Mommy, Juliet, say. How you could say that? Miss Richards, it's not you. 
<laughs> well, I will go home and I will knock on the door and I will ask for mommy and I will say, Good evening, Mrs. Ramsey. Good evening. I don't know if Juliet ever told you about me, but I'm Miss Richards and I'm Juliet's English teacher. I brought her home from school earlier today because the principal sent me. What happened? Something happened to Juliet? Well, well, yes. Somebody hit she? Well, no. I'm tired to say if anybody hit me, child, it could be me and them. What happened, child? Eh? Somebody hit you? It didn't feel it's because your father is living there and is afraid to go and make noise. Miss Ramsey, nobody hit her. So what did this happen? Um, it is more a... Uh, a serious matter than that, Mrs. Ramsey. Can I come inside? I would like to talk to you in private. What it is happen? Come down, Mrs. Ramsey. Julia has brought to my attention something very, very serious that has been happening to her. And she let me know in confidence that that she is being sexually molested. Sex? What? I don't understand. Yes. I'm afraid that she is having sexual relations with who? With with someone you know quite well. Who? I want you to be very patient and understanding because this could have very serious implications for him as well as the child. Who are you talking about? Your husband, Mrs. Ramsey. Mr. Ramsey. What happened to him? It is he who has been having the relations with Juliet. What you saying? Are you crazy? Yes. I who say that? Juliet say that? Juliet, say that you're coming. Come here. What it is you tell this woman? Miss Richards? Yes, what it is you tell a woman? You see, I tell you she wouldn't believe me. What it is you tell a woman? Oh, Mrs. Ramsey, I told you. I don't want to hear from you. This is between me and she. I want to know what man will take you. You hear what the woman said? Answer me, I'm talking to you. Yes. You really hear what the woman said? What man has take you for you to say something like that? Mrs. Ramsey. I say I don't want to hear from you. You stupid enough to believe this line which I'm bringing she here? Mrs. Ramsey. Don't but Mrs. Ramsey me. You was a big teacher and you up in this little wretch, she lie? Mrs. Ramsey, it's not a lie. What happened, Charlie? What happened? Your father not nice to you? He does treat you bad? Answer me, child, what happened? Mrs. Ramsey. Miss. You know this child's father? No, Mrs. Ramsey. Well, I know this child's father. This child's father is my husband. You hear me? My husband. And I know my husband. I know him better than you. And you're not going to do that, something like that. You're not a madman. man You're not crazy. He's not stupid. And he have a wife. Not to say he don't have a wife, you understand? Not to say he don't have a wife. So it's like she lying. Somebody do your child? Huh? Somebody, some, somebody do your something? Some pissing tail little boy, yeah? or some one of his teachers in the school Mrs. who like to take Ramsey, advantage of the Mrs. little children. You afraid to say that so you can make up this life? Why child, why so pray and answer me? Mrs. Ramsey. You ever in my house yet? Please, please, before I leave. I know it must be difficult for you to believe something like this about someone who you love so much. But if I can furnish proof of what I'm saying, will you be able? To at least consider it? Madam, Miss, whatever your name is, you expect me to believe that my husband, the man I married to for all these years, you expect me to believe that he's doing this nastiness to your own daughter? He's not a beast or some, some... But if it is true, your daughter could be in serious danger. This could have serious implications on your family. Look, I'm saying this for the last time. I'm not going to believe this. What I have to find out is why my daughter suddenly get possessed with some kind of madness, some kind of obia to say something like this. I don't know what possessed she, but if you want to help me get this devil spirit out of she, dread upstairs. I will deal with this matter in my own way. Upstairs! I have nothing more to say. Upstairs, I tell you out! You see what I tell you? My mother is something else. She too dread. Are ah, you lucky? Yes. My mother believe in anything about me. And instead of blaming my father, she blaming me. If something like that had to happen, as soon as she find out, you're going to her she. Why you do it, eh? Why you do it? I, I don't want to hear. The same thing your grandmother always used to say. You're no good. 
what? Don't tell me anything. What kind of daughter I have? If you're taking your own father, what is left for you to do? And then if you and then if so, all the time I'm looking at you as a decent young girl, I could imagine the amount of money you must be taken already. I don't know what I tell you for. You're doing as if it's my fault. <laughs> so then why you let him do it? That is what I want to know. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know? That is all you could say to me is you don't know? <laughs> no. He hold you down? Eh? Tell me. <laughs> no. He forced you? Eh? No. So then why you let him do it? That is what I want to know. Why you let him do it? I don't know. Why you not going to ask daddy now? Yeah, but you see, my mommy, you feel she would ever let daddy get away with something like that? If you just hear quarrel in the house. If she only hear about something like that, she went for daddy one time. <coughs> Why? What? Why? What? Why, Terence? Why? What happened? What's the matter? Why you do it? Do what? Don't, Terence. Don't insult me! What's the matter, my dear? Don't touch me! What's wrong? Don't touch me! What's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? What is wrong with me? Why you do it? Do what? Don't Terence. Terence, don't pretend you don't know what I'm talking about. Look, whatever it is, you know I love you. Come here and tell me what the don't problem is. Don't touch me! Get your filthy hands off of me! Okay, okay. My own daughter, Terence? Your own daughter? Our own daughter, Terence? Patsy? Patsy? What wrong with her? Terence, don't pretend. Don't pretend like you don't know what you've been doing to her. You've been doing this to her, Terence. You've been fooling around with her. What do you mean fooling you around with her? You know very well what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean. You need to stop playing games and say what you want to say. And say what you mean. I mean having sex with her, Terence. What? Deny it. You're mad. Yes. I'm mad because you're sick. You are sick and you are crazy. I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I want to. Patsy, tell you that? Yes. I want to. And you really believe it. So I shouldn't believe it? Don't play with me. I want to know what you think. What it matter what I think? It matters. You is my wife. If you believe something, so what you left for other people? So Terence, I shouldn't believe it. It matters. It matters to me. I want to know if you lost all your senses, all your faith, all your trust that just so out of the blues you jump up and believe something like this. Again? So I shouldn't believe it? I don't know what to say. I shame. I shame not for myself. I shame for you. I shame for you. Just so. Without even asking me. Without even waiting to hear what I have to say first. Just so. Without a word or a tear. Without a sign or a signal. Without as much as an admission or defense from the man who you have married for all these years. You leave me for all this time. Huh? You know how serious this thing is? This is more than a crime, you know. It's a sin. A sin. You know what a sin is? And you really believe it. Well, I don't know what to tell you again. I really don't know. You know what, Terence? Say something to make me believe it not true. All are you talking about what your mother will do, what your father will say, but... but yes, I tell you, my mother real dread. My mother was, she dread up. Yes, but what about you? 
I tell you what I would do already, I would go and I would tell my teacher, Miss Richards. But suppose you can't do like Juliet and you can't go and tell no teacher or you have nobody to tell, no friend to tell, what you go do? If it's me, I tell my father to behave. Not me, not me. I tell him nobody nothing. I go afraid. Imagine my father hold me down one night when nobody at home. Or suppose somebody find out. Mm -mm, I not say nothing. But me understand, you know. If you don't tell nobody, he will want to come and do it again. I know a girl who used to go to junior sec with all of you and she make a baby for she father. Well, it's not she real father, you know. It's she stepfather, but it's the same thing. I don't care. I not telling anybody. Suppose me mother find out, or me best friend, what go happen? You know how much people go be talking about me? Girl, you stupid, yes? Me I care. Let them talk. I go play as if I don't know what they talking about. To besides, my father will never do me that. But suppose, just suppose it really happened. How? What you go do? How you go feel? How it could happen? When I see him come in, I run in like I ain't no one. <laughs> this girl don't teach yes. Just pretend then. Just in case? Yes, yes just in case. case. If it really happened? Yes, if, if it, it really happened. happened. If it happened to me? If it happened to me? I go dead. No! I don't care. It's the only thing to do. I don't care. I go kill myself. No! You can't kill yourself. It's a sin. Listen! Why not, eh? Suppose somebody find out. Today, tonight, now. What go happen? I don't care. I go kill myself. No! Go live. You is not the first and you ever be the last. Listen! Ain't it better at death? What to do? Ain't it better at death? Everybody could be laughing at me behind my back. I don't care, I go kill myself. No! You have too much to live for. Ask God forgiveness and start again. Listen! Suppose I get pregnant, eh? Suppose I make a child. It's my child. It's my father's child. My father is the father. My father is the grandfather. Yes, he's better dead and gone. I don't care, I go kill myself. No! And you have a girl who used to live close to where my first husband mother living. She had a baby before she father. And now she's a successful woman working for big money. You are going to tell. I can't tell mommy. I know I can't tell my mother. What she gonna do? How she go feel? Is she stepchild? Is she grandchild? The child father? Is she husband? I don't care. I go kill myself. No! Suppose I get pregnant. Suppose I make a child. What kind of child I go have? The child go come out deformed. I go kill myself. No! That is old people talk. That thing about the child go come out deformed. Just make the child and listen. What my friends go say? What my boyfriend go say? Is he stepchild? The child father? Is he father-in-law? How he could trust me again? How he could want me again? Which man go want me again? What is the use? Who I go talk to? I don't care, I go kill myself. No! no. Go and tell your school teacher. teacher. Miss. Miss. My father does have sex with me. What? Speak up, child. Come on. My father does have sex with me. Your father vexed with you? What's your father vexed with you for? Speak up and don't mumble in front of me. Go and tell your mother. She bound to understand. Mommy, um, you remember that time it was me alone home? When you went by Tandy Elsie to, to spend the weekend? When you and daddy did fall out? Look, you don't have homework to do? I don't want to hear about your father this hour. Because I don't know where the hell he gone since morning. Go and tell your guidance officer. Morning, dear. You look so pretty this morning. When was the last time that somebody told you that you have very sexy lips? Tell your father to stop. He's not a beast. He's not a beast. He's not a beast. Tell your father to stop. He's not a beast. He's not a beast. He's not a beast. Go and tell your best friend. 
Go and tell your godmother. Tell your school principal. Go and see family planning. Ask for the halfway house. Your grandmother, she's the best person. She all she bound to understand. Your grandmother. Your social studies teacher. Your church minister. Your pastor. They will be a man. Try the Lord. Your boyfriend. Miss Daisy, you living up the hill. The Shango priest. A psychiatrist. The netball coach. Little child. Call the blasted police. When this happened? During this week? No. When? Apparently. It has been happening for the past two to three years now. How old is she now? Fifteen. And now you come to report it? What do you want me to do now? Well, we would assume that as you are the law, you have some measures in place to ensure that not only justice is being served, but some remedial measures as well, so that... Madam! Wait, 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 Madam University graduates! Hold up on the big one and them! Look at them! Let me find out for myself what's going on. But it seems that your inability to act on the evidence. Hold on. Let me take me time and see about this case, right? Look. Come. What's your name again? Sharon. Shrat. Sharon what? McIntosh. McIntosh. So you sure this really happened? Sergeant, are you doubting the child's word? We have to ask yes. If it's she's stepfather, it is a different person altogether. But if it's she real father, it is a crime, it is a sin. But if it's she stepfather, well, you never know if this young stepfather nowadays. Sergeant, as difficult as it might be for you to believe, it is the child's real father. Madam, the kind of complaint I'm getting since I work in here, I believe in anything. Now, boy, the first time it happened, he hold you down or he force you to do it. You can remember? Yes. Well, tell me how it happened. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell him in your <coughs> words. I'm sure he's bound to understand. Now you working, madam. Now you working. Go ahead. Well, one night when it was me alone home, daddy come home and... He was drunk? No. I don't, I don't know. Usually when they do these kind of things, it is always be drunk. Must be take two drinks to bad in the head. Go ahead. Well, I was in the bedroom and daddy come in the bedroom. And he hold me ar around my waist. And I thought he was making joke. But after that, when it's me alone home. How much time this happened? On over 10 to 15 occasions, Sergeant. Wait, wait. Where your mother was when all this was going on? Where your mother was? Your mother? At the Send child. child. Put, Put him, him in court. Bring him up. Damn, Damn it. it. Get a lawyer, man. Get a lawyer. Your Honor. Prosecution would like to strongly object to the line of questioning and attitude being displayed by our opponents on the other side. What is the problem now, Mr. Ramukhan? So, the defense is attempting to make it seem as if it is the child who is on trial and not the father. Counselor, you worry too much. I need not to remind you where the onus of the responsibility lies. We are still a free country, so, and one still enjoys the privilege of being innocent until proven guilty. Trust me, Mr. Ramukhan. I am here to see to it that your client's rights are not trampled upon. Go ahead. Let us return to the night of the first encounter with your father. Let us call it that. You said he was not drunk. No. You said that he did not force you. You said he did not use any physical force. No. Yet you easily submitted. You gave in. Why? <laughs> were, were you afraid of it? <laughs> no. You quite readily and willingly gave in without fear, without shame, without the slightest trace of remorse. You were willing to jump into bed with a man who had given you life itself. 
who had seen to it, that you knew right from wrong, who had sent you to school, and who had ensured that you have everything that you have here now. And you have caused him to commit this wicked act. To now have to face the embarrassment of the entire community. Yona! By your shameless and your careless act, you have caused your father, your own father, the man who gave you life itself, as it were, you caused him to commit this wicked act, this infamy to now be degraded and defiled in the eyes of the entire law-abiding community. You are not the abused, you are the abuser, you are not the victim, you are the victor and you are not the vanquished, you are the victorious, you are not This man, this harmless, unfortunate man, is not at fault. Your Honor, object, all right, the court, all right, in the court. Check your politician. I see here that you're only 50. Quite three years again before you can exercise your franchise, before you can vote. Don't worry. I shall pick up your case at the next possible opportunity. The matter shall be put on file and we'll contact you as soon as a more opportune moment occurs. Patsy! Patsy, time to come inside! Already, Mom? Yes, your daddy Richard, he brings something nice for you. You are, my daddy brings something nice for me. I come back and play tomorrow or when I finish, all right? Okay. okay. My daddy like me. I go in. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Patsy. Supposing your father really do this to you? I don't care, I go kill myself. You know how serious this thing is? He's not a madman. Who says so? My father does kiss me. He's not a beast. He's not a beast. He's not a beast. Daddy! The more we are together, together, together. The more we are together, the merrier we shall be. Ladies and gentlemen, the Theatre Arts Group of the St. Joseph's Convent, let's take a moment to reflect um, and let some of the issues which were brought up by the students resonate with us. When we come back, we'll meet our panel. I'm so fed up with my 14-year-old child. She's driving me crazy. I just don't know what to do. All that I need is some good licks to wake up. Alice. Ignore the counseling pansies given. Government employees have free access to professional counseling services under the Employee Assistance Program known as EAP. EAP? EAP? What's that? Uh, not me that telling people my business. Listen to me, Alice. I was struggling with my child. I made an appointment to see an EAP counselor, and I was very satisfied with the service that I received. And you know what? Up to a day like today, my information remains confidential. Cox, how come nobody in the office knew anything about your counseling? Ah, that's because EAP counselors, they work on the strict clauses of confidentiality. I know you know what confidential means. Eh, uh -uh. EAP providing professional counseling services? How much is it? Girl, the counseling is free. Free for you free for your child and you know what your information remains confidential call the eap unit at the ministry of the public service telephone number 468-2269 for more information eap works let it work for you i noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property you will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that my contractor isn't dumb I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. 
The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. Mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. When you're out at sea, there are no service stations along the way or supermarkets for a quick stop if you need something. It is essential that everything you will need while at sea is on the boat before you leave. That's why pre-sea checks are so important. Checks should be carried out by more than one person to ensure that all essentials are on board. Everything on board? Yeah, everything here. Yeah. Let's go to the Yeah, port car with that. Yeah, boy. Pre-sea checks should include food stores, extra water and fuel, Navigational equipment, safety gear, and communication yep. equipment. Okay, light out, sir. That's what I'm doing. Before heading out to sea, always ensure that all equipment is in working order. You are stocked up on food and also extra fuel. Call the lighthouse to inform them of your voyage plan and inform someone responsible of your departure time and estimated time of arrival back on shore. For more information on obtaining a license to fish, contact the Department of Fisheries at 468. 4143. Welcome back to our panel discussion in commemoration of International Women's Day. Like many of you in St. Lucia watching at home and our panel today, I saw this skit from the St. Joseph's Convent Theatre Arts Group for the first time and it was quite difficult not to get emotional about some of the issues which were raised by the students. I want to extend an immense thanks to the students of the St. Joseph's Convent Group and the teachers as well for your absolute bravery today and I want to invite the audience and the panel to give them a round of applause. I also want to get an immediate reaction from our panel in terms of some of the issues that were raised by the students. So let me introduce them. They've been waiting quite a while to be introduced. We have with us Miss Virginia Joseph, a counseling psychologist. Thank you for being with us today. We have Miss Diane Felicier from the organization Women in Action. Thank you for being here, Diane. We have Mr. Cameron Law of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Thank you for being with us, sir. And of course, we have Pastor Lennox Maxius from the Lafay Pentecostal Church. Thank you for being with us. Very Immediately, pleasure. I want to get a response so that the students can hear um, some of the issues that they raised and the effect it had on our panel. I want to start with you, Diane, um, just to give us an idea of what kind of emotions it evoked in you to watch the skit today. Um, watching the skit, um, yes, I did get a bit emotional um, because I have been dealing with a lot of the issues and a lot of the things that came out of the skit is really factual. It is sad, but it is true. So um, it was just a reminder as to all of the serious issues that we have in St. Lucia with regards to child abuse. And it's the constant thing that we hear, the constant neglect, the constant abuse of our children. Um, sadly, um, I know we spoke about the daddy, but we also have the, the police officers, the dance teachers, um, the people that we trust with our children who abuse them. Um, in that way. Um, so, yes, it was very emotional for me. It, it brought back a lot of memories. And it also brought back to, to relate to the effect that this situation has on family. It divides the family. You have the mother, the father, the auntie. Everybody is divided. Um, so that brings back a lot of memories. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Dan. Constable Law, definitely towards the end of the skit, we did see the police perspective in terms of how some situations happen when people come and make those kinds of reports to the police. Um, is this something that um, resonates with you? Well, um, 
very interesting mm -hmm. um, when I sat and I looked at you know the kids in action and a lot of what was portrayed is what really happens in terms of some of the <coughs> reasons why you don't get the reports coming in some of the reasons why even when the reports come in it, it's withdrawn even while it's in the system um, the police aspect of it yes you do find some of us as police officers you know not knowing you know how to relate to situations of that kind when the reports come in so it, it does um, say a bit and it tells you that you know there needs to be a little more education where the police is concerned and even the public at large so um, I would say it was very 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 real <laughs> in terms of how it was portrayed Yes, Pastor Maxius, I want to go to you. Um, mm. I mean, the church resonated throughout <coughs> the skit. We saw references that the girls made to go tell your pastor, um, go tell your religious leaders, and the response um, was not very good. Are these some of the issues that you deal with on a daily basis in terms of some of your members of the church or even persons who are not members of the church coming to you with such stories? Uh, first of all, um the skit that the girls did a while ago is kind of frightening. Um, yes, we've had situations like these to deal with. Um, I was hoping apart uh, the skit that there was someone playing the role of a pastor <laughs> <laughs> to hear what would be his reaction to that. But it tells a frightening story, mm -hmm. um, and that's happening in most of our communities. The other part of the thing is, is the mother's response to the child's complaint. Uh, we have serious trouble on hand. Um, I'm trying to pick a case out, and I know we are on television. But yes, I've had situations like that to deal with. And I put parents, both parents, to sit down to discuss the issue. Um, it never ended the way it should um, in these days now. Because, like the girl said in the play, go tell your mother. Now, if the mother is not prepared to take it further, what's the next thing? Mm -hmm. And some of the problems we have is that the mother try to shield the father. Um, I've known of a situation where the mother said when he's thrown into prison who's going to take care of me? <coughs> so it's like the child becomes the sacrificial lamb for the sake of the mother's upkeep. Mm -hmm. And so I, 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 I don't know we, we really need to sensitize <coughs> our communities. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's through committee meetings, parents, uh, stepdads and moms. People need to realize that David said one thing that's very important. Psalms 127, David said, children are an heritage of the Lord. Um, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Parents need to begin to realize that children are a gift from God to us. <coughs> now, we don't go about brutalizing gifts. We take special care of gifts. And so I, 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 I don't know. I'm hoping that we be able to penetrate the lives of parents, both moms and dads, uh, that they come to realize that child is a precious thing in the eyes of God and if they fail to take care of them they'll suffer. One of the issues you just raised is something I hope we can discuss later on in terms of what contributes to the behavior of some parents when their children come to them and report sexual abuse. We have so many issues that are tied up in that including finances, poverty, mm -hmm. housing that leads to child okay. sexual abuse. But I want to go to Ms. Joseph just to get, I saw you looking so intently um, at the skit and I saved you for last on purpose because I know you can get into the mind 
mind of what actually happens to a victim. Um, can you tell us how you felt about the skit? Um, I must say that it was well executed. I mean, they display so many different aspects um, of when you look at overall um, child sexual abuse, um, from the reaction of the parent, from the reaction of the child, and, and society on the whole, like teachers, those who are quite involved with that child. Um, but importantly, they, they touch base on things in terms of um, the reaction, and really important, the reaction of the parent. Um, and this is one of the big issues that we are faced with. When, when a child is, um, for example, they disclose that they've been, whether molested or they've been actually been, you know, um, been victims, um, the reaction most parents, the way they react will determine the outcome for the child. Um, whether that child will be, so for example, depends on um, suffer more psychological trauma, it goes to the courts, they get um, support and, and so forth. And another area, again, they, they spoke about is in terms of the signs. And, and it was well executed. Um, a lot of the times, parents are very, very much, um, I would say, they are not observant. They are not mindful. So then there is no awareness. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the time, you find children do actually display those signs um, that they are. And, and they did in this case. Um, you saw the behaviors. Um, for example, while they were playing, there was the one reported the kiss, you know, stuff. So all those things are like signs, and they really dis demonstrated that that parents need to be very mindful of. Um, and as our colleagues say, I think education is one of the key things here, yeah, um, because most parents do not know how to respond. They don't know how to react. They don't know what to look for because of a lack of um, knowledge. So I believe um, it's not only about educating the child how to react when somebody approach them or when somebody is behaving in such an appropriate manner, yeah. but also how the parent, um, educate the parent, how, what they need to look for and how they need to interact with the child as well to be very much observant of those, those symptoms which most times they actually display. And most of the time there is the symptoms, it's just that most parents are so busy with their, their lives and their own social you know, um, issues as well. Because sometimes parents themselves are abusers. They are victims as well of abuse. And um, those things just slip by and very negligent of that. Yeah. Thank you very much to the panel for your point of view on the skit. Thank you once again to the St. Joseph's Convent students. You guys were amazing. Thank you very much. And I hope um, that you take this on the road <laughs> so that <laughs> other persons can, you know, see some of the issues that you raised. I want to get into our topic now for the day. Society's role um, in protecting our children from sexual abuse. I want to get straight into it. Do any of you think that we have failed or we have succeeded in terms of protecting our children? I want to start with the pastor. Personally, I believe that we have failed. And um, I remember when I grew up, you know, and don't get me wrong, this is an age-long situation. That's not something that just that happening, you know. But even though it happened then, when I grew up, the child was actually raised by the community. Hmm. Everybody look out for you. Today, we only look out for our own children, and some of us we even, even neglect our own children. I went to a restaurant yesterday, a lady was selling food, and I stopped by to talk with the lady. And a girl came in to buy something from the lady, and she said, um, no, that's your bus fare. I'm not selling you. So the child went out and gave another girl the money. The girl came in and said, um, I'd like to have whatever it was. They said, she sent you, no, I'm not selling you. So, you know, when I thought you're selling, you're doing a business, she would have been excited to get her things set, um, sold out. Then she said to me, this is a practice of this little girl. She spends all the money my mom gives to her, and then she go and beg the minibus drivers mm -hmm. for money to go home. And I said, this is a wonderful thing. You know, she was not just interested in selling the girl she was also protecting the child 
from going and ask people. And I think we need to get more of that in our communities to help our young So I guess you're talking about that, the fact that, you know, we really used to live by the fact that it takes a village, a village to raise, raise a child. child. Yeah. So are you suggesting, before I move on to another panelist, that cases of child sexual abuse were not as prevalent when people were more involved? Well, you see, the thing is, we don't have the stats to say then it was 10 and now is our and 10. But um, you find individuals who are more watchful for children. And I know lots of children got protected because they had adult people watching for them. And I think if we go back to that, I mean, with all that we talked about educating communities and all of that, but being watchful for the child, I believe, would go a long way. I will go to um, Diane right now to get your point of view on whether you think we have, based on what the pastor has said as well, whether you think we have failed in terms of our responsibility um, to the children of our society. Um, I would say as um, we have failed. I would say that we as a family, we have failed. Um, we have what the culture, the culture, we have the wangement cult culture. We, we like to do wangement. True. And it also goes back to what the pastor just said. We think of um, maybe if I send this man or this teacher or whoever it is to prison, mm -hmm. that I am not going to be able to get what I need. Yeah. Um, we have failed, I would like to stress on the family, um, mm -hmm. because I believe that the family is really the key to society. We have failed as a family because what we have, we, I know he, um, the pastor spoke about the family before, mm -hmm. but the family before, they started the culture of keeping uh, that secret. situation a secret. What you have, you have the aunt would keep it a secret, the grandmother would keep it a secret, but we have a growing society now for persons who are willing to speak out and we still have this this little fraction in the family that like to keep everything a secret mm -hmm. so it's it really causes problems when other persons within the family wants to speak out um i know of two cases um where there is this 12 year old who was molested and she actually got an STD and her parent or her mom and her stepdad stood up but they now are being taken to task by the family because of course of the the the, the mm. it's like you shouldn't speak out it should be kept behind I know of another situation um, where there was this mother who stood up for her child and the family really is divided because that mother who was of course abused and affected by the whole secret um, notion of it felt that she had to stand up for her child but the family felt that it was wrong and that it should be kept a secret so with that i say that we have failed as a society we have failed as a family in terms of refusing to speak out and, and to protect our children. When, what we don't realize is when we don't speak out, we affect our children. They grow up with that anger. And sometimes you go to the school and you would see these children getting on, oh, oh, and then we would question, what is wrong with that child? But you don't need to, yes, you need to question what is wrong with that child, but you also need to question what is that child really going through? Even at the workplace, you have these women, they come out and they have all of this attitude and they're so angry. And what we want to do, send them home. But do we really find out what is that woman going through? Sometimes that woman has to deal with that her child is being abused, but she doesn't know how to deal with it. So I believe that we as society, we have failed in such a way. Um, I mean, I went through a report. I was reading a report here. And it says that Can you cite which report is that? Um, it is from the, sorry, mm -hmm. 
It is an article from um, Beli Bel Yus Lamis, mm -hmm. a 2016 extraction. And it is saying that St. Lucia is one of many islands in the Caribbean that is facing a potential problem of child sexual abuse, an epidemic. And of late, we had that report where Denry was cited as one of the, 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 the villages with the most abuse in, in the island. I'm hoping that um, Cameron Law and can speak to some of that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what it says again, it says that fear and limited, limited trust in the legal structure both contribute to, to under-reporting by victims and their families. Again, you know, and all of that was executed in the skit. <coughs> we go there, and, and not just that, but we have frustration. You go to the courts, and you go to courts for two years. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and you have all of that happening. So this is where I say that we have failed as a family, we have failed as society. Mm. Constable Law, um, society is obviously made up of not just the police. However, when it comes to those cases, some of the times, police definitely get blamed um, when cases don't go forward, um, get blamed for even under-reporting <coughs> as to why people don't come to the police. Do you think that the police is fulfilling its, its role um, in the society in terms of sexual abuse cases? Okay. Um we, I, I would agree. And do you think we have failed? Yeah. That yes, we have failed. And um, whilst the police over the years, we have seen an increase in the number of reported cases. Um, we have made some strides in terms in that we have a dedicated unit to um, investigating those the crimes of children and vulnerable persons. We still, as the police force, because these crimes are not only reported to that dedicated unit. And they're well trained. But when you have other police officers who are not sufficiently trained to actually receive that report with a level of empathy and even sometimes professionalism, it you know drives the victim away from continuing with the report. So yes, we have we know and I will stress again on education in terms you need the police, the society needs to be educated. Another place that I would you know, say that we have failed, and it is one of the areas, as you know, she spoke, Diane spoke mm -hmm. a while ago in terms of um, Wajma, is the judicial system. The length of time it takes for one case mm -hmm. to go through the system, it frustrates the, even the victim. Because yeah. sometimes you may, you may get a child um, bringing up a case in primary school by the time and the case comes, they're in secondary. You know? yeah. So the, the parents and those responsible for that child See, figures some most times it's better you take a watch more on the outside already they ne in need because you find those cases sure. are very prevalent in the in the poorer um, poor mm -hmm. communities. aspect communities so i think yes we have failed in that regard um education i will go back on and we need to um not only educate and call you know meetings we need to reach out to the communities go to the levels of the persons who are more vulnerable as opposed to calling, if you stay and you call, <coughs> you ask, them, you invite people, mm -hmm. they would be reluctant to come in. Yes. But if you would reach out to them and get to their level, mm -hmm. then it would be a lot easier, I think, in terms of educating those people. So we have failed in terms of educating our people. We have failed where the police is concerned in terms of educating the entire police force in terms of how to deal with and receive those reports to be empathetic and professional. And the judicial system in, in in total has failed in terms of the number of how long it takes for one case to actually go through the court system and to get to a determination at the end of it. It really, you, sometimes we want to blame <coughs> the parents and we want to blame the victims, but we must understand how they feel, mm. having to walk up and down every week, every month, every year to rehash the, situ the, the, the circumstances of that case. Over. We need to understand that and how it affects them. So yes, we have failed and there is a lot of room for improvement yeah before I, before I switch that to throw that question over to miss joseph i wanted to raise another issue with you because there's a psychological thing as well that happens to victims when they file these kinds of cases what are the police doing when someone has filed a case and they come back and they say they don't want to go forward with the case for whatever reason is there a point where there's some um 
therapy or something that ha that's given to them or do the police try to convince them to please go forward with the case in every case of child sexual abuse there is the aspect of therapy that child must you know receive some sort of therapy so the police does not work the child alone. and the family the child and the, the child? family okay the police does not work alone in, in, in the cases. They, the human services and other aspects of or other agencies that work with the police. When the, the parent decides, and most times it's the parent because the child would not be able to make that determination as to whether they move forward or not. And a lot of the times it has to do with um, the stigmatization at school, mm -hmm. protecting the family itself. I am aware of, of cases or a case where I was actually called by an individual and told me that you know the daughter had been molested by a family member and I automatically my first thing was report the matter to the police a few days late went by and I did not hear anything and I asked what what seemed what happened and I was told that you know um, we decided not to move forward with it the family is already divided so much and it would further divide the family and that was the extra I tried to convince but there's so much I can do you know so I that see everybody is, nodding, so I'm that guessing is the situation yeah. that we, that we yeah. face. Mm -hmm. So counseling is always available and is always provided and is always advised. We always advise the victim and the parents that they should get that sort of counseling to enable them to cope with the situation moving forward. <laughs> Quite a lot for you to take in, um, yeah, Ms. Um, Joseph, but let me get your point of view on where you think we're at as a society um, in terms of our response to sexual abuse and have we failed um, our children? Okay. Um, I'm not going to blame society right now. I think they've, they've all covered the bit on society. Um, but I think a lot of the time as well, we parents um, has to do a part. And um, when you look at statistics in terms of the perpetrators of child sexual abuse, they are the family, the parent. Mm -hmm. And majority, whether it is in Lucia the Caribbean in the US, that, that's what the decision says. Most of these children are actually being abused from the hands of the parents, a family member, an uncle, a cousin, mm -hmm. a close person close that they person. trust. So these are the same individuals that they trust. Um, also, you, you, you have um, in terms of our, our homes, broken homes, um, a society, a culture where a lot of single parenting uh, children are not being supervised. Um, they left the Lord to just do what they want. Um, also, you have social media, television. Um, children, you have also, um, as well we say, um, children are being sexual abused. We have children who initiate the encounter. You have children who actually would request a um, person to perform certain acts on them because of what they've seen. So, for example, I remember something about I had a case where a, a nine-year-old child requested an older boy to perform certain acts on her because she observed her, her mother doing it with a boyfriend. Um, so I think it's a story time as well where our children are very much exposed to a lot of those, whether it's pornography, um, inappropriate sexual behaviors from the home, from the parents, um, where these as well, just as, for example, curiosity, you know, um, they, they will perform those things either with their little friends or the parents and others. Um, and so that in itself, when you look at whether society has failed, I think we parents as well um, has failed as well um, because of those negligence in those areas. Um, also, we have the, 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 the cases of the incest. That is quite rampant. Um, there's quite a lot of that on the island. And then, um, again, this is from fathers and, you know, the children. Um, so it is, it, is, it is something that, I mean, I think when we look at whether we feel a society, I guess it, it comprises everybody. Um, also, when you talk about education and counseling, I think there's also a stigma. Um, he did say that, our colleague said that we, they, they, they have the service. Um, I'm, not, I'm, I, I'm not sure if I'm <laughs> going to su support you here. Um, you probably, after, afterwards, you maybe have to give me a list of those services that's available. Um, because I know we, we, we lack that sort of psychological support. Um, a lot of the victims, um, whether they went through the system, uh, the hospital, the police, and most of them, that's the end of it. There is nothing further from that. So again, we, we as a society fail, and we as a government, we fail to provide that necessary support system for them, for the, for the victim. Um, so I think that's my point.
Yeah. Okay, thank you very much to our panel. We'll take a break. We'll be right back because there are some other issues um, I really want to go into, like what specifically um, counts as child sexual abuse. Um, I've been doing a lot of reading and mm -hmm. we've definitely seen that it's not just about the physical. Mm -hmm. um, it can also be emotional. It can also mm -hmm. be verbal. Mm -hmm. um, so I really want us to get into that, um, how it starts and how it mm -hmm. um, exacerbates. So we will speak about that when we come back. The problem starts with finding a suitable spot. It extends to double parking. Offloading zones are ignored, thus inconveniencing commercial activity. Handicapped spots are occupied by drivers who use the quick errand excuse. And of course, there's the constant fear of parking tickets. In an effort to curb these and other parking-related issues, the Castri City Council will be implementing short-term paid parking. $3 an hour can save you $500 in parking tickets. Short-term paid parking, coming soon. year old child she's driving me crazy I just don't know what to do all that child need is some good licks to wake up Alice ignore the counseling pansies given government employees have free access to professional counseling services under the employee assistance program known as EAP 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 what's that uh, not me that telling people my business listen to me Alice I was struggling with my child I made an appointment to see an EAP counselor, and I was very satisfied with the service that I received. And you know what? Up to a day like today, my information remains confidential. Cox, how come nobody in the office knew anything about your counseling? Ah, that's because EAP counselors, they work on the strict clauses of confidentiality. I know you know what confidential means. Eh, hey, hey. EAP providing professional counseling services? How much is it? Girl, the counseling is free. Free for you, free for your child. And you know what? Your information remains confidential. Call the EAP unit at the Ministry of the Public Service. Telephone number 468-2269 for more information. EAP works. Let it work for you. Welcome back to our panel discussion. We were having a very lively discussion in terms of how we feel about um, society's role and whether we have in fact failed our children. One of the issues that I really want to get into, and I hope, um, Ms. Joseph, you can address this first. What is child sexual abuse? Um, I was reading somewhat of a definition, um, and it says that child sexual abuse is largely categorized by child rape, which involves any forced violence, manipulation, coercion, physical penetration of the victim, or a combination of the latter. I was also reading another definition which also spoke to some of the issues you raise, which is child pornography, mm -hmm. things that are shown to children, mm -hmm. you know, the way a person speaks to a child. Mm -hmm. um, I think that when we think of sexual abuse and reporting it, we always think about the physical. But what if someone shows your child something or records your child doing something, you know, that can also fall into that category. Can you speak to that for us a bit? Yeah, um, so there's usually you find there's two types where you have the, the contact, uh, you have the non-contact. So the contact will be where you have whether in terms of the child is forced to do um, perform sexual acts, um, rape, um, exploitation and stuff like that. Um, like for example, they, they will either have them perform um, sometimes it might not be there's no penetration, so they also have that as well, penetration. Um, sometimes you have the case they just have the child perform um, sexual act on them or on, on the somebody else as well. Um, so that will be, but also for the non-contact you have where the, that child is exposed um, to, to sexual, um, um, sorry, I think, if I, sorry, sorry um, sexual materials um, like pornography. Um, when I used earlier the example where the child sees um, sort of um, certain sexual behaviors at home, inappropriate behavior. So, for example, a lot of times children are exposed to seeing their parents engaging in sexual activities 
um, that will be the non non contact, and that is considered as child abuse, um, sexual abuse as well. Um, also, you you have a case in terms of. Um, but uh, just before you go on, that can sometimes happen accidentally, right? It can. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> it can. And, and then it is, it is up to the, 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 the parent at the time when if the child is supposed to accidentally walk into the bedroom that they, they, they have a chat with the child afterwards and, and expo and say, okay, what well, you have seen and it is just grown-up stuff. You know, just talk to the child mm -hmm. to explain wh wh what is that all about. But it comes back to our culture. Do we have a culture... Um, and maybe I, I, I'm sorry no, to cut okay. you off because yeah. the, the questions come as you mm -hmm. speak. Do we have a culture in St. Lucia of having those types of conversations mm -hmm. with our child? Is it just a occasion where you just hit the child? What are you doing in here? And you don't talk to the child after about what they have seen. Yeah. So that's it, it so is. Yes, it is. So for example, something simple as um, masturbation. Yeah, um, it is a normal behavior of when when. Um, children growing up at a certain age, um, they would exploit the body um, and they must be touched to the private parts and so forth. And this, this is normal. Um, whereas sometimes you'll find a, a parent might probably walk in, and I remember when I was in the UK, I had a, a case like that. I was working, working with her, she was 25 years at the time. Um, but it was an incident where um, in her early age, but maybe seven years, um, her father walked in and she was from an Asian culture where um, she, she was her, her cousin was touching her and it seemed like some, something that has been going on but because of the reaction of the father she took it on board as okay that was molestation that was raped um, whereas it was very much an innocent like maybe two children very much exploiting and, and maybe um, because of the feelings emotion comes along with that the sensation um, got engaged in that where so depend on how the parents um, react, and that's what the reaction is very important to the situation um, that can actually determine what, how the child takes it on. So cases like that, um, parents need to, and it's, we have a culture where um, when it comes to sex, sometimes it's, it's uh, very secret. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's a conversation a lot of parents don't feel comfortable to talk to their children about. Um, and it's left to what they see on, on social media and television and mm -hmm curiosity they might be curious and try to explore and, and try so again that all those things will be like factors as well yes so how do we encourage our people in our society to recognize the different types of sexual abuse and what are the options that are available to them um, let me throw this to you Diane um, what do you think we need to do as a society to recognize sexual abuse at all levels mm -hmm. the emotional the pornography the um, actual physical you know what has been your experience um, first we need to look at the behaviors um, of the child um, I know most persons um, they would think uh, that child abuse um, it's just like oh I didn't rape you or I didn't but it it's it's uh, uh, how would I say it it's <laughs> It's just there. Um, there is so much, you know. Some of them you use. They, they use the children's mouth, the children's. They use objects. They use all of that. Um, I would say that we need to, and I would go back to Mr. Law's thing. First, we need to educate our parents. We need to educate our parents as to the warning signs. What do we look for? Um, we have some of these persons, or these puppet um, persons, I would say, uh, that. Uh, they use certain things to take advantage of our children. Um, our children would, I, I, we have the modern technology, and everybody wants to be with the modern technology. So they use these things. Um, we can't afford to buy our children uh, S5, is it S5? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yet still we see our children come home with an X, S5 and we don't question them. And these are some of the things that these people use to take advantage of our children. They give them what we cannot give them as parents. So these are the things that we need to look for. We need to look for when they come home. Um, we have gotten so, um, how would I say it, technology savvy uh, that we sit down by each other and we have conversation via WhatsApp. And sometimes we see our children on the, on the telephone 
maybe 24 hours. They come home after school and they're on that phone. But we don't monitor the conversations that they're having there. And these are some of the places that these people tap into and they target our children. So these are some of the things that we look for. The other warning signs that we look for, we, we have become so selfish as a people uh, that uh, the children are hurting, but all we could think about is I. I would lose this. I have worked so hard for this. Um, what do I do? But we don't think about the children. What do they go through? Um, I know of this case, again, um, uh, that uh, this child who went through this situation, luckily, she was um, strong-willed enough that she went on and she did very well. She's, I think the sky is the limit for her. So these are the things that we need to look for. Look for the things that, you know, we cannot afford it. We need to go back to the old days. I remember that I would come home with something and my grandmother would tell me, Ko Henry, mm. you know, and That's we refuse true. to do that. We need to go back to the old days. And sometimes what we say is that, you know, we are now in the future, but no, a lot of the teachings that they gave us in the old days, if we go back to it, Talk we would be it. able to see some of the challenges and how we deal with it. And we will deal with it even without going to the law because we would go back to the basics. Um, so these are the things that I would say that we need to look out for. Look for these warning signs because these are where they take, their, they take advantage of our children. I was reading some statistics in preparation for this and I wanted to read out one because it's an issue that has already come up. Um, it says it's from a UNICEF report on St. Lucia, perpetrators mm -hmm. of child abuse. It said of the 63 perpetrators identified in reported cases of sexual abuse in 2010, all were known to the victims. Mm -hmm. I want to throw this one over to you, Constable Law. Um, I mean, so many times we have these people in families um, who the victims know very closely. Um, can you give us your perception, your um, experience in that? Um, as I said before, most of the cases as you read, stem from the family or somebody who's very close to the family. Because of that, you know, you would hate as a police officer, even in the community, you speak of the police in the, our districts, you would hate or somebody would report it to you that this is taking place at this, in this family's house. But you do not get a report from the parent because they would try to protect the family. Mm -hmm. They try to protect, a lot of times, the image of the family. So that is one of the um, most difficult aspects of, of child sexual abuse or child abuse in general, where the family tries the best to protect the family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, not the child, but the mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. So you would, they just don't report it. Mm -hmm. They try their best to probably keep the child away from the perpetrator as much as possible. How, how long can you, mm -hmm. you do mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that is, from a policing standpoint, that is one of the things, and not just a policing standpoint, but a community, a society the standpoint, that is the most difficult aspect of it all. Mm. When it, you know it's happening, the community knows that it's happening, mm -hmm. but the family refuses mm -hmm. to yeah. report it. Yeah. That is the most difficult thing. How do you deal with it? Yes. Unless it is a case where it is so severe mm -hmm. that the evidence is glaring, and you could contact the human services or some other agency to actually go in and try to get the child out. Other than that, you know, our hands are tied, yeah, basically. But I don't even just think it's the family. Sometimes, you know, I know of a case when it comes to the education system mm -hmm. where a parent was simply told that this child will no longer sit in the class where he was abused, mm -hmm. but the teacher is still in that class working with other students so there are new victims even though you keep that child away um, from the teacher there's other victims that could come up as well I want to throw this to you pastor because I'm sure you deal with it as well people who come to you from families where there has been sexual abuse where the person is in the family unit or very close to the family um, what do you do in that situation if somebody comes to me and like says, my uncle, my cousin, interfered with me. That's what you're asking? Yes. 
Well, one of the things I think recently um, we were told if a child um, report uh, such a case, contact the police right away. Um, because I, I've seen children suffer because you get a parent together, um, settle the case, but a child is hurt emotionally and it's difficult to move on in life because of what happened. And um, I personally believe if, if, if a person does such a thing, um, that person should be jailed. The law should take its course because I, I really can't help the individual, right? Um, but I would imagine they would come to you and say maybe counseling might help this person or prayer? Yeah, but you see, yes, counseling and prayer is important. Child may need to go through some mm -hmm. kind of deliverance because the child is emotionally hurt. Mm -hmm. But then what do you do with the person who commits the crime? Mm -hmm. You have to deal with that part first and then when that is dealt with, then we decide as to how best we help the child, pray for the child, counsel the child. My wife is a social worker, mm -hmm. so in cases like that, you take the child to her and she deal with the child. I want to go back to the skit we saw earlier. Mm -hmm. One of the issues that came up, her mother was telling her that she has the devil inside her, yeah. that she somehow seduced yeah. Um, the father in some way I mean from a religious perspective <coughs> because you know we are in a society where you know a lot of that thinking still goes on what do you do in that regard well number one we need to keep in mind that doesn't matter the age of a child um, and I heard somebody made mention of the child um, going forward to individuals and so forth. The child is not to be blamed. The parent is to be blamed. Bible says, uh, I, I talk Bible here, train up the child in the way of the Lord that when he grows, he'll not depart from that training. So if parents spend time training their children, I ha I'm not talking as a man with us. I have five children, three girls and two boys. And um, the, you could talk to them now. We discuss everything. I taught my children about sex from age five. The mother came from the States with a book and she said, that is too small. I said, no, <laughs> they need to know. And we talk everything because I believe, like I said earlier, children belong to the Lord. My responsibility um, is to raise them for him that when he's ready, they would be ready to work with him. So I don't train them for me, for my home. I train them for the Lord. And I believe that we talk a lot about education, churches, schools, families, have to sit with children and discuss these issues with them. And if anyone is found guilty of hurting a child, the person should be jailed. Mm -hmm. Ms. Joseph, I saw you writing, um, so I'm definitely <laughs> interested in finding out your take on the situation. One of the first issues I raised, the statistics, obviously, that a lot of these people are um, known individuals in the home. What do you think parents should do in, in, in those situations? Hmm. Um, I think they have spoken a lot about the different sort of issues in terms of um, what's going on. Um, I think we can we can like different um, different perspective. A lot of those uh, individuals themselves, um, as I said, could be a case that they themselves has been abused. Mm -hmm. Now remember, it's not only a father that abuses mothers, mm -hmm. abuse as well. Um, you have mothers and daughters, which is rare, the sort of taboo thing that you ba barely hear about it. Um, but sometimes they themselves, as as a child, has been, mm -hmm. and it becomes like a way of being. That's, that's what they know. Um, as well, you have things in terms of like um, substance abuse. A lot, a lot of those person perpetrators um, sometimes they they abuse substance. So whether they're alcoholics, they abuse certain drugs, street drugs. These are factors that contribute to that as well. Um, mm -hmm. You look at from broken homes, children have been raised um, from broken homes, as well as very young parenting as well. Sometimes. Um, 
um, parents who probably have the children at a very young age, um, lack of knowledge, lack of education, all these things could be um, contribute factors. So, um, but that's something we don't really discuss as a society. No. What has happened to the perpetrators? Mm -hmm. You know, we kind of adopt um, lock them up approach Trudeau. as to mm -hmm. what actually happened to this person to cause them mm -hmm. um, to react that way mm -hmm. or to put somebody else through that. Mm -hmm. What have you noticed in speaking to persons like that? I mean, notice in terms of what caused. So yeah. behaviors, or you yeah. referring I'm, to? Well basically, I'm asking: Is it somebody who has been abused that would abuse others? A lot of cases, you you have that um, um, whether they themselves um, and the, what they do identify with with the abuser. So, for example, maybe if the father or they're from a home where they themselves have been abused, sometimes they, they tend to display certain behaviors. So you, you do have that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but also we, we have individuals who probably um, naturally through other, other mental disorders, you know, other health, mental health issues, um, they would probably display certain behaviors. Um, but I wouldn't say that majority of those persons maybe are abusers themselves, have been abused themselves, big victims. I wouldn't say that. but. Uh, a lot of them can be a possibility, um, have been through um, those similar experiences as well. Um, even when you look at very moving that from to say domestic abuse as well, um, a lot of person you find in domestic relationship, maybe they are coming from a, a home with similar sort of structure as well. So that, that tend to be um, cases as well. Since we're on the subject of perpetrators, it's an opportune time for me to bring up the subject of the sex registry which has been um, talked about over the last several years in St. Lucia. Um, I want to start with you, of course, <laughs> <laughs> law enforcement. Um, do you think that a sex registry um, would work in St. Lucia? Um, do, you, do you think it's a good direction to go? Would it work in St. Lucia? Um, hmm. I, think, I honestly think it's a, a, a good direction to go. St. Lucia is a, we're pretty small and everybody knows everybody, so to speak. Um, Some might say that's the problem. <laughs> with the, well, you know, uh, whilst not many people know the activities of others, True. everybody may know everybody, yeah. but your activities, not many people know the activities. Some, there's a saying that everybody has a vice. Mm -hmm. And so a sex registry if it's brought in properly, I think it would re it would work. In it would work very well. It would cause most of these people because a lot of these situations in terms of child sexual abuse, whilst you have the ordinary man committing those crimes, you have these people who are very respectable people who are upstanding citizens who actually commit those crimes also mm -hmm. and most of, and that is where a lot of the wajmas come mm -hmm. in yep. but the sex registry yes. would probably only account for those who have been convicted oh yes yep. yes but the fear of being found out mm -hmm. and, and put on the registry okay yeah, yeah okay. that that would deter some people you know in terms of the activity so i think yeah it, it, it's a good idea diane um I think it would be a very good idea um, with the correct structure and mechani mechani mechanisms um, in place. It would be very good. Um, I know we have something, we have a lot of persons, what we call deportees, coming mm -hmm. from the US, coming from <laughs> the Canada and the UK. When they come back, do we know what they're bringing back to us in our little island of St. Lucia? I am, I'm not saying that they're not St. Lucians, but do we know their history? Um, do we know what they have done? So I believe if we have that in place, um, of course, our police officer, who I believe would have this information, that we would be better ready to deal with these persons when they come in. We would be able to, to monitor them and, and see what is happening. So I believe if we have the, the, the structure and everything in place, it would be a great idea. So do you think a uh, sex registry should be something that would, should be accessible to the regular, normal public? Or should it just be something that um, law enforcement or persons trying to do due diligence on someone would be able to find out? I think it should be, um, with just the law enforcement and, and, and 
I don't think it would have the effect that um, you would want it to have. I think it should be out there um, with the, the, the information should be out there with the public. I don't think it should be just the law enforcement. Yeah. Okay. Pastor, what is your take on the registry? I support that 100%. And like my sister rightly said, uh, is something that should be exposed to the public. I believe it would form as a good deterrent uh, to prevent people from doing that. I didn't say, I'm not saying it will stop mm -hmm. them, but I, I, I think it's a good direction to go. Ms. Joseph? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I agree to some extent. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be useful. Um, but for just a bit, I'm going to go back on the perpetrator bit. Um, we, we know in a way in our society, um, not all the actually um, accusations are true. And then we'll have the cases where, um, say for example, a young, young child um, who's sexually involved with another older person. And you know the fact that once you're under the age of 16 and then there's, there's sexual uh, relation that's supposed to be considered as as rape um, we have very young um, teenagers who get into our system into the hospital and so forth with pregnancy and childbirth and you, you wonder how they get to that extent you know to so reach so far but importantly um, in for example in this case where there is a relationship um, between the the, the minor mm -hmm. with the adult which they're supposed to know better um, or if somebody has been wrongly ac accused and they've been convicted, um, we look at how society treats that person. Um, and it, it, they're going to be stigmatized. Um, would that person ever be able to sort of rehabilitate back into society? How do we look at that person? Um, is it the case that you walk around with that label, you know? You know um, and, and to some extent, that would have a an, an psychological or sort mm -hmm. of effect on that individual. So. It has the benefit at the same time, it, it does have those uh, disadvantages and advantages to doing something like that. The, the other question is the type of society that we have, do we even believe as a society that perpetrators of sexual abuse can be rehabilitated in, in some way? Mm -hmm. Some people feel like when you commit a crime, you will keep mm -hmm. committing that crime. You want it to come in or not? I'm just saying I don't believe, you know, that it is not it is impossible to rehabilitate persons who have committed you know crimes of that nature um, like she said over um, there are some persons who actually have a relationship with somebody you know and of course they should know better that this person is a child but then there's a relationship and um, there's some teenagers who actually bring themselves on to individuals and they actually look more mature than you know the average child and it's it might very well be a genuine mistake by this person mm -hmm. to have taken this person to be older than they they, they, they are so um, you have these situations and of course you have those that it's just who the person is and would, would continue doing it but I think there are instances where persons can be rehabilitated and it, it's, it might not necessarily even be in the nature of that person to actually go about preying on you know, younger people. So, yeah, the persons can be rehabilitated. Diane, do you believe perpetrators of sexual abuse can be rehabilitated? Um, I believe so. Um, it will be um, a lot of work in progress, but um, I believe that um, it can happen. But there is a possibility. But are we part of a society that encourages that? I mean, we were in a little bit of a dispute earlier mm -hmm. regarding um, whether therapy mm -hmm. actually goes to victims mm -hmm. of sexual abuse. So if we can't even um, put things in place mm -hmm. properly as a society to make sure our victims are protected, how do we monitor perpetrators and make sure um, they are on the path to rehabilitation? Ms. Joseph? <laughs> well, I, I know that is one of the areas that we really lack in. Um, and um, one of the things I'll say, I think one of the ways we, when we look at our topic, how we, society can help, and I think that, that can be one of the beginning of the things that we do. Um, so for example, the, the early interventions, when the person come in, say so whether at the hospital or at the police station and make a report, what they do with, with the, the victim af after. And I mean, 
uh, Pastor did mention that we deal with the crime, you know, and then after that we provide. But I, I somehow I don't agree with this um, <laughs> because I think a lot of the times we fail to realize that um, for most of those person, um, yes, the 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 rape the experience was traumatizing. Um, but the traumatizing of the whole re-experiencing that starts just from there. The moment they start reliving or, or t talking about that experience again, they've been re-traumatized. And every mm -hmm. single day, that individual has to live with that experience. Um, and, and most of the time, if they don't get early treatments, for example, psychological support, it leads to so many sort of psychological and emotional trauma. So, for example, mental PTSD, mental mm -hmm. disorders, depression, some of them are very suicidal. Um, self-harming, you know, certain sort of behaviors, and, and that goes into adulthood. So you're looking at from just, just this little experience, um, whether they, they, they actually um, convict the perpetrator or not, it doesn't really make a change for that victim. What makes a change is the support they re receive at that time and mm -hmm. for further on in terms of rehabilitating and sort of support mm -hmm. and so dealing with that trauma or that experience that they had. Before we go to a break, I want to get um, the pastor's point of view. I mean, you would probably have persons who have been convicted or perpetrators who would come to the church um, seeking some kind of rehabilitation or counseling um, or being saved in some way or reborn, I might, I, I, if I could say, what, what do you do in those types of situations? And do you believe, in fact, that perpetrators of sexual abuse can be um, reborn, so to, so to speak? I personally believe that anyone can change. Um, like you said, reborn or born again. Uh, but then I, I know of a situation where uh, an individual that did that to two of his daughters and um, he came seeking help. Uh, we talked him, wife, uh, got a child involved um, but that individual came to shelter under the umbrella of the church. Now, when someone is reborn, there are certain things you see in a person's life um, that tells you change has taken place in the person's life. We also need to understand here, this, this, this is, uh, is heavily demonic, right? I, I know my sisters and them <laughs> would deal with it from a different standpoint. Mm -hmm. But what will cause a man to look at his own daughter and rape them a number of times? That's devilish. Me, that person needs deliverance. If the person goes through deliverance, uh, you will know it, you will see it. There are certain things that, certain fruits. The uh, Bible tells us that you know a fruit, a tree by the fruit, it bears. And so, as a person trusts God, I believe that God is very able to the person. But a person don't just come and see, well, I'm changed <laughs> from that. And I, one of the things that I did with this thing, I called all the leaders of the church. And I said, let me explain something to you guys. This guy has a problem. And I did that in order for them to watch out for the younger girls in the church. That's my rule. And after a while, I didn't see many more, so I don't know where he is now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, we're definitely getting into the discussion right now. We'll take a short break because we really want to get into what are some of the solutions? What are some of the things that society, um, from our different aspects of society, what are the, some of the things we can do to change the current situation that we find ourselves? We'll be right back. Pamela, I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. 
Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. Mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. Welcome back to our panel discussion on society's role in protecting our children from child abuse in light of Women's Day being celebrated on March 8th. I would now like to go back to our panel. We were having a very good discussion, but I want to switch a little bit to what are some of the solutions. What We already know what some of the issues are. We already know that um, a lot of the times we have failed our children at various levels of society. What are some of the things we can do as individual, as community, um, as leaders um, to alleviate and to cause our society to be more reactive to child sexual abuse. I would like to first start um, with Constable Law on that issue. Okay, um, the police is the last, is the end result. After it has happened, then the police gets involved. But to prevent it from happening, um, education is the key from and more so educa educating our men. It is more prevalent with True. men, educating our men. Um, reaching down to meeting the men, wherever they are, speaking to them about child sex abuse. You know, um, I think that is where we should start. Mm -hmm. A lot of our parents are young, very young parents. We have a lot of young parents and most, a lot of our parents, they go out to the parties, they get involved in drugs and alcohol and everything else. And I think that is where, you know, we should start as a society, <laughs> educating our men primarily and, you know, including the women, educating the children to understand what it is when, whether it's your parents or anybody else, to understand the signs, to understand what is right and what is wrong with parents and other family members or anybody else making these kinds of advances to you as a child. And um, I'm not sure that five years is, is, is old enough, but you know, we have to start at an age where the children can understand, getting the children, um, speaking to the kids so that they would be brave enough. And that is one of the, 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 the issues mm -hmm. with kids they are not brave enough. Speaking to even their peers at school, mm -hmm. the stigmatization, curbing the stigmatization that when this happens, mm -hmm. you have to empathize. You know, when you as a friend realizes it, it has happened or is told that it's happening, mm -hmm. to encourage your friend to speak out, to speak to her parents, speak to the teacher. So with everything that's said, I think the key to, um, it wouldn't end it, but it would curb it on a very, very, very serious level is education. Um, as I said, the police is the last straw. So before it gets to the police, we need to ensure that it does not happen. And educating all parties involved is the way to, to go. I would also add that I do think the police need to be part of the education oh, yes. process. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, I know that the police do have community outreaches yes. and those kinds yes. of things. So mm -hmm. I do think the onus too is on the police not just to be the last straw, but to also be oh, part. Yeah. The police, I could tell you, is doing... I worked with the community relations department a few years ago, and the police is doing a tremendous job in terms of going out to the various schools. We actually go out to almost every school as when I worked in that department in the north from Grosley all the way to Denry you know with this level of education so yes if you educate the police properly the police will be able to impart that knowledge on the students in the schools and the community that we go out to 
speak to when we do. So, yes, you're correct. Okay. Yes. Um, I would li now like to go to Diane. What do you think are some of the solutions um, to the problem um, that we now face that society can put in place? Um, I would say that um, we need to support um, the government, um, the various organizations in the implement implementation of various projects. Um, we also need to look at taking away the children from the situations where they are mistreated. Um, we can also look at offering chil children shelter and provide medical and psychosocial care. Um, look at supporting the victims with legal help and train officers how to deal with victims of sexual abuse. Um, we, look at, we can look at encouraging our girls and our boys to continue their education, seek to empower them in girls clubs, boys clubs, and offer them skills training. We can also look at um, supporting families of abused children in increasing their income because poverty remains one of the biggest causes of child abuse. Um, so these are some of the things that we could look at. Um, I, I also want to go back to what um, Officer Law said. We also need to, need to look at um, what we call the community policing. Um, if we have that in various um, communities, uh, that we could be each other's keeper. And I believe that's one of the biggest things that we could do is to be each other's keeper and look out for each other. Um, because we tend to keep everything a secret, you know? But these things, we don't speak out against it. And I believe that these are some of the things that will help society. I'm glad you brought up the broader issue of poverty, and that's one of the issues um, we wanted to speak about. Mm -hmm. Poverty and households, housing. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Officer Law, a lot of the times when it comes to those cases, when you visit oh, yes. the actual mm -hmm. household, um, you see how some persons um, are living and you, you can see oh, yeah. how that situation mm -hmm. can develop to where, even in the skit we saw earlier, mm -hmm. where the mother is dependent mm -hmm. on a certain individual mm -hmm. for financial help. So these are some of the things that we can do um, mm -hmm. to help alleviate that problem. Um, I would now like to go to Pastor Matthews. What do you think we can do um, to alleviate um, child sexual abuse? Well, I, I want to support what the officers said, and I think uh, we've said that a number of times in the previous discussions that we have, education. Um, my recommendation would be that, um, like we, what we're doing here, we should move to communities, have panels, invite the neighborhood to discuss these issues, and hope it brings some kind of change. Education is key um, towards bringing change to a situation like that. Ms. Rosa? Yes, um, I think importantly education, as uh, um, the other colleague said, um, but no education in terms of um, how parents should the reaction, how they should react, because we saw that in this case, that was yeah. one of the issues. Mm -hmm. um, being, being aware, educating about the signs that they need to look for, yeah. and that's really important. Um, as well, I think um, us as society and government pays our part in providing that sort of support after. So, so for example, having at least counselors in the police station responsible for that point of entry, early intervention, um, in the hospital. So as soon as they come in, there is that support system. Not only, remember, not for the victim, but the family. Because a lot of the times you find that it really does a lot of damage to the family as well. And then you still continue the common cycle where, you know, then um, is more a breakdown in terms of family structure. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe that once we can probably provide those sort of services, that probably in a way will sort of curb or reduce those sort of cases. How do we address um, the specific problem that came up in our discussion of the Wajma? How do we stop mm -hmm. that kind of situation that keeps happening? Um, I would say that um, our government, we should try to make it law that whenever an issue Whenever we get that case, it automatically becomes 
a state case and not a case of um, you against me, but it's actually the state against whoever it was reported. And uh, so then that gives, um, it's almost like you, you can't withdraw it. You can't if it's a state, a state case. So I would recommend that, that we look at making these um, cases um, state case, where the state is the one dealing with it and not you. Um, I think I think it is it is actually that you know it does it the onus is not just on the parent to come to court and say I withdraw mm -hmm. um, if the judge or magistrate does not feel it should be withdrawn I think they have the authority to continue with the case so why so are, why then are we but still at the end of the day yeah. if I am if I don't want to come forward to give the evidence then there's no case. But isn't there an aspect where you can have um, someone be a hostile witness? Yeah, there is. Where there you that. force them to testify as, and you have their witness statement well, as well. Well, that would be with the lawyers and the, <laughs> the whole legal <laughs> fraternity. But um, really and truly, if, if there's no evidence to put forward, there really is no case. And that is the problem that we face with this thing. Pastor, I saw you uh, wanted to come in with this one. What I was wondering, um, with what uh, my sister said a while ago, uh, even if the government make it law, then there must be some penalty. Because if it, there's no penalty to me mm -hmm. coming to testify, mm -hmm. I'm not just coming. Mm -hmm. But if there's a penalty, mm -hmm. then I'm here reconsidering. Ms. Joseph, yeah. um, I think a lot of times as well, so we say the could man and, and mm -hmm. not wanting to go has to do a lot to do with sometimes the age of the child. Um, a lot of the time parents look at protecting the child in terms of do not want the child to be re-exposed or be re-traumatized with that. Um, also, you have a lot of issue of pride and shame that comes along with that. that that's a big culture and an issue as well. So there, there is, it's quite polyphasic in terms of reason factors that contribute to why. Um, most parents will not want or take the child actually through the, pro the whole process sometimes which is so long and dragging and quite traumatizing. I really wanted to give our panel the <laughs> opportunity to have a final word. Um, however, time flies <laughs> and we are out of time. Um, so I, I, I do want to throw it to you, um, Ms. Joseph, to just end, um, just to give us an idea of how you think we can heal the society in terms of this sexual abuse issue and what would you say to parents teachers people who are listening right now um, it has become an increasing issue I mean in our society um, but I think a lot of the times um, we have a society who is quite stigmatized by from my perspective um, in terms of therapy counseling seeking help um, we like to keep things secret. We do not want the neighbor or, or the other friends to know what's going on. So there, there is a, a culture of silence. And they don't realize how, um, how damaging it is to the child. So teachers, um, friends, colleagues, if, if a child comes to you, I think it's on, on us to act to take that step and move forward. And John says, okay, it's not, not my child, it's not my business, I'm not getting involved. Um, because at the end of the day, you're not even having the family you're helping that individual. Because if we do not assist, um, that child can probably be quite scarred in terms of long-term effects, psychological, emotional effects on the child. Um, so coming together as one as a society where government, um, teachers, police, um, social workers, I think we all need to, our parents, we all need to do our part in, in protecting those children. And I think if we all do that, maybe we can probably actually fight this this crisis, this situation. Thank you very much to my panel this evening. I think it's been a very good discussion. I think we definitely need to plan a part two <laughs> of this discussion and hopefully not next year when it's Women's Day again. I think we need to do it before that and really thrash out some of the issues associated um, with child sexual abuse. Thank you very much to the panel. Thank you to St. Lucians watching us live on NTN and obviously on the social media channels. I do want to say that you know we all have a collective responsibility to protect our children from sexual abuse and we all need to own that and do what we need to do in order to remove this scourge from our society. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. <laughs>